Okay, so we're going to do the base promoted hydrolysis of an ester. So an ester functional group, if you remember, is a carbonyl carbon with a single bond to another oxygen, which is bonded to another carbon. So let's use this as our molecule, ethyl acetate. And if we're going to do it in base, usually it's done with something like sodium hydroxide. So hydroxide OH minus and sodium Na plus. And we can draw those out as a pair of ions because they're always going to be uh, dissociated in solution because if you remember sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So the first thing we have to do is identify our electrophile and our nucleophile. And our electrophile is going to be the thing that wants the electrons and the nucleophile has to be the hydroxide because it has a negative charge on it. So in this case it's going to act as a nucleophile not a base and it is going to attack the carbonyl carbon. And if we form a new carbon-carbon bond, we're get, or a new carbon-oxygen bond, this carbon can only have four bonds, so we have to break that and form our tetrahedral intermediate. And that's a very classic step when we react to carbonyl carbons. Attack the carbonyl carbon and form the tetrahedral intermediate. So, on to the next step. Well, the first thing we're going to do is draw out everything that we had in the last step that doesn't have an arrow going from it, because we haven't changed those bonds, so they have to still be exactly the same. Sodium is still there. Okay, what have we done? Well, we've taken the negative charge, that lone pair of electrons that was on the oxygen, and we've, more, we've formed a new carbon-oxygen bond, and we've taken this pair of electrons, and we've put a negative charge on the oxygen. So we moved them from being in the double bond up to here. We took that pair of electrons and we put it up there. And this is called the tetrahedral intermediate because it's got a tetrahedral shape because this was sp2, three things attached to the one atom, this is sp3. So it's now a tetrahedral shape. And it's an intermediate because it never lasts very long. So what happens next? Well you can see I've put in a pair of reversible arrows. So this step is of course reversible. The carbon-oxygen double bond is always the thing that reforms. So the carbon-oxygen double bond reforms. But as I said, and as you know, you have to have only four bonds going to your carbon, four or less if there's a positive charge on it. One of these is going to have to leave. Well, if we kick this pair of electrons down onto that oxygen, we go backwards. And that doesn't take us anywhere, so we'll ignore that option. So instead, it must be this pair of electrons out onto that oxygen there. Now, we did, of course, have the possibility of taking that pair of electrons and putting on the carbon. But as I say in many of these videos, you're never going to kick out a carbon with a negative charge on it when there's a possibility of kicking out an oxygen with a negative charge. A carbanion is a really uh, much less energetically favorable thing. So let's continue. What do we have next? Well, again, draw out everything that you had in the last step, but except for that which has been moved by arrows. So. That bond had an arrow going from it, so it's gone. All of that is still there, and if we're keeping track, our sodium is still there. So we took that pair of electrons and we made a new carbon-oxygen double bond, and we took that pair of electrons and we kicked out the alkoxide. So it's an alkoxide because it's an alcohol that's been deprotonated. And at this point, you're going to notice a few things. Well, one, you'll see that my bond angles aren't great. So we can redraw that, and we can see the functional group more clearly. So that's equal to a carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid, and sodium ethoxide. So I'll draw that out here. Negative charge, sodium positive charge. Now, sodium ethoxide, like sodium hydroxide, is a strong base. So this is in a basic solution. So this carboxylic acid is not going to last very long. But as you'll see, all of these steps are in equilibrium. So the reason that this gathers at this end is because very quickly, that is going to deprotonate. So the strong base is going to deprotonate the weak acid and give you a carboxylate. So a deprotonated carboxylic acid and an alcohol. And if you want to get your carboxylic acid back, what you have to do is add in a strong acid so it will protonate the weak acid and you can recover it like that. But that's the basic mechanism for base promoted hydrolysis of an ester. If you have any questions, post them below. I hope that helps. Thanks.